Hello, gem cutting friends, and I hope your holiday season is going wonderfully. Today's video comes from a question that came up on a social media post, and someone had asked me, why are you still using the handpiece machine when all of these other amazing digital, high-tech, super precision machines exist out there in the world? And I wanted to make a video to answer this question because I thought it was a little bit more nuanced than I could write. So if we back up about six, seven years, my main machine was this one. This is a polymetric scintillator, American precision, bespoke, beautiful, digital angle, depth gauge, speed control, all the bells, all the whistles, and pretty much all the stuff that you'd want out of a mass machine. And I stumbled into the handpiece machine. No digital angle dial, no depth gauge. At that time, there wasn't even a speed controller or a cheater, my original machine. Um, it was just the handpiece, the spinning lap, and the stone. And the first time that I used this machine, it totally shocked me because I didn't know what to look at. I was so used to looking at this, looking at this, just looking at all these different readouts and gauges. And I was so used to looking at that stuff and then looking at my diagram and then looking at that stuff and index gear, okay, that I really rarely ever looked at the stone. Of course, to get the meat points and everything, you have to, but it's pretty easy on these kinds of high-tech American machines to never really look too much at the stone and really just focus on the depth, the angle, et cetera, et cetera. And when I switched over to this, it really transformed the way that I cut. And to this day, I've never gone back. I, I switched over to the handpiece machine when we opened the school in Bangkok. And this is the machine that's taken me into my professional life. This is the machine that's taken me on the journey to mastery. Uh, this is the machine that's taken me from Bangkok to France and on and on and on. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about why this is still my favorite machine and why I, why I still recommend this machine to our students and to people all around the world. So one trend that I've noticed over the last 10 years of being a gem cutter and being actively involved in online forums and in-person discussions and discord groups and, and everything else on the internet is the obsession with precision tooling, precision readouts, precision measuring devices, and the obsession with everything being quote unquote perfect. It has to be perfect. The lap has to be perfectly flat. If my tenth of a degree goes off even just a little bit while cutting or polishing, it's a disaster. I gotta get rid of the lap. I gotta send it back to the, get it resurfaced or whatever. There's so many comments and, and discussions and threads about perfection of machine. And if, is my machine a little bit off? Is this, is that, is blah, 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 blah. When I moved to this machine, even though I wasn't, obsessed with that stuff. It freed me from needing or even being able to obsess about these fine, fine things. It forced me to look at my stone and look at my me points, look at my angles and understand what is happening here. What do I need to do to fix my problem? Why is this little thing crooked? You know, why are my meat points not meeting? How do I adjust them by eye, by hand and make everything perfect? And today, when you look at my stones, and I welcome you to go and check out my Instagram and, and look at all the stones that I've cut over the last so many years, they're not competition level quality perfect. They are great stones above average for the gem and jewelry trade. They are good enough. And that's pretty much where I wanna be. Not perfect, because perfect takes a long time, too long. Uh, not commercial quality, because that's just not good enough for my personal standards, but a bit more, something a bit special, a unique shape, a unique design, great polish, good meat points, a beautiful stone, something that brings out the color, the sparkle, the beauty of the stone. To me, the obsession over tooling is unnecessary because either A, you're a professional commercial cutter and good enough is good enough, or B, 
you're just having fun and what's the point of perfection? Honestly, what's the point for you or anyone else to obsess over uh, a tenth of a degree or a slight error of a meat point at the girdle or whatever the problem that you're having may be um, that causes you to obsess over tooling? Because we know in the end, one way or the other, we're going to finish our stone. Hopefully, we're going to finish our stone. Will it be perfect? Maybe or maybe not. But does that depend on the machine? I would say it depends more on the cutter. You could throw me onto this machine and I'm going to cut a great stone. You can throw me onto this machine and I'm going to cut a great stone. You can even throw me onto a jam peg at this point with no angles and no indexes and I can still cut a great stone. It's not the machine in my case anymore. It's not the machine. It's me. And hopefully in your case, it's you. Now, if you're a beginner cutter, of course, we'd like to get the best thing that we can afford. We want to give ourselves the tool for great success. But I would argue that there are more important features on a fastening machine than the digital angle dial or the depth gauge or the precision of the tooling or the perfection of the machine. Because ultimately, in six months or a year of cutting, the perfection of the machine has gone out. The flatness of your laps has gone out. The newness, the sparkle, the sheen of the metal has gone dull because you've been using it and that's good. Like any tool, we, we use it, we fix it up, we use it, we fix it up. So let's get back to our original question. Why am I still using this simple machine when we have advanced and more precise tools like this? And it all comes down to goals and purpose. For me, the goal ultimately is mastery. I wanna be able to create the most beautiful stone from the rough that I can with my knowledge, with my skills, with my understanding of gemstones, with my understanding of design, with my personal sense of aesthetic and beauty that I've developed over the last decade. For me, as the cutter, having this handpiece in my hand is powerful. It's visual, it's tactile, it's fast, uh, it's more ergonomically convenient, and I just feel more in control. I feel like I understand how to manipulate, how to look, how to adjust everything. And even though I've got the exact same features here that I have on here, this is the one that I prefer. Even though this is a simpler machine, it's a cheaper machine, it's a less precisely manufactured machine for sure, this one to me is the one that I feel that can be connected with more. And when it comes to the student, the new cutter, having this in your hand it makes so much more sense. You want to tilt the angle forward a little bit to make the meat points meet in your hand. It makes a lot of sense to just tilt it forward. And when we're in class, I use a lot of gestures like this or like this or like this or like this because you, you understand it intuitively. If you've ever written a word or drawn with a pencil or a paintbrush, you know what it's like to have this tool in your hand and how to manipulate your hand to make the tool do what you want to do. And the same goes for the handpiece. Whether I'm teaching a student or doing it myself, having it in my hand, it just directly connects to the centers of my brain where I am used to making stuff. I want to make it do this, I'm going to do that. Whether I do it with the plate going up and down, whether I do it with the angle going backwards and forwards, whether I'm doing going left and right with the feet or with the cheater or whatever, it makes intuitive logical sense to me. Now, of course, as I said, I can get the same end result out of this machine with this quill in my hand, but is the experience the same? No, I'm feeling like I'm constantly having to adjust fine adjustment of the angle, coarse adjustment of the angle, height control, looking at it, trying to get the angle of the light just right so I can see the facet and on and on and on. This one, when I wanna see what I'm doing, I tilt it under the light, I see exactly what I wanna see, two seconds with the loop and I'm back down. It's fast, it's easy, it's fun. Ultimately, it has to come down to it's fun. I could use either one of these machines, I own them both and I've owned them both for years and years now. But to me, even though this one technically is the more advanced machine, the more high tech, the better tooled machine, this one feels to me like a used car. You know, it's sort of sluggish. It works, it gets there, but it's not that fun to drive. This, this is like a motorcycle.
you know. And I'm just doing wheelies over here with my handpiece, uh, making beautiful stuff. Now, of course, this is my own personal choice, my own personal sense of what I like, how I enjoy cutting. But as someone who's been teaching students for years and years now, we've chosen to use this machine in both of the schools that we've built because, first of all, it's easy to teach on. Second of all, it seems to be more intuitive, especially when we start getting into advanced skills, like the new advanced cutting workshop that we just launched, where we're gonna cut an entire design with no diagram, no angles, no indexes, free-handed pear shape, and you're gonna have to invent the entire diagram all the way around. I could not imagine teaching that class with this. Not because it's not a good machine, it's just there's too much to think about. Even just the ergonomics of the machine. I mean, if I'm sitting here cutting, I got one hand here on my quill or on my stone, I'm doing this. I have to adjust the height so my hands are crossed. And then if I want to adjust the angle a little bit because my meat points aren't done, I got to uncross my hands and do this, you know, adjust my, adjust my fine angles and all that stuff. There's just so much hand crossing. If you're using an Ultratech, you got it's all the way up here. This one, it's like designed to be comfortable fits right kind of between your legs. Your hand's here, your hand's here. Everything's where it's supposed to go. The light is by your head and it's part of you. It becomes part of you and it feels, this station now has become part of me. In the same way that when I was a bike messenger, my bike felt a part of me, like I was just running with it. When I was a musician, my guitar, because I had played it so much, I had modified it and adjusted it and set it up and practiced on it for years and years and years, it just felt a part of my hands. And now in this evolution of my artistic creation, this machine has become a part of me because of the years and years and years of practice that I put into it, as well as the teaching, which put a lot of that back into my mind in a very deep level. So if you're a brand new cutter and you're considering the choices, I wouldn't talk anyone against a mass machine, a digital angle dial mass machine. If your goal is competition cutting to be the ultimate number one cutter of the US Fasteners Guild, the digital angle mass machine is for you. If you wanna get into concave fantasy cutting, well, there's only two machines, and honestly, there's really only one machine, the Ultratech, that can handle that, that's set up and built to do that, go with that one. It makes perfect sense. But if you're someone who's more like me, who's going to be an independent professional cutter doing recutting for local jewelers and buying rough and cutting it and selling it to the local trade for my livelihood. I want something that's fast, that's intuitive, that makes sense to my brain, that's fun, and also that doesn't have a crazy overhead startup cost. You know, we're talking about 2,500 versus five to 6,000, you know, considering any of the high-end mass machines versus the Sterling, it's a huge difference. I mean, three machines is in one of these, essentially, when it, we're just talking about price. So when you're the brand new cutter who hasn't cut before and you're looking at what machines to get, it's hard to justify six or 7,000 bucks. Even me as a professional cutter has a hard time justifying five or six or 7,000 bucks. Now being here in Europe, there's important shipping duties on top of the price it starts to get really, really expensive. So this is another reason why we decided to use this machine for the school. And this is another reason why I've just kept using it. It's great, it's fun, it's easy. Is it as good as an Ultratech or a Polymetric or a Facetron as far as manufacturing quality? No, I wouldn't even consider to argue that point. This machine, it is what it is, it works. But if we were to use the analogy of the painter, and this is an analogy that I always use because I love the analogy. If you saw a beautiful Renaissance painting or a beautiful modern painting from a master, would you expect the painter to have used anything but a wooden stick with some horsehair on the end, the paintbrush? That's still today the number one best tool for painting a painting. Now, just because we have high-tech fun toys like this that have digital angles and depth gauges and buzzers and whistles and bells and whatever else your machine might have, does it mean that it's better or does it just mean that it is? 
Because to me, I'm making masterpieces with this, and when I'm looking around the European cutting world and everyone's using jam pegs still, sometimes literally just that wooden stick in your hand with a wooden cone with no angles and no indexes and still making perfect stones, I'm asking myself, what's all the hype about? Because the masters are still using a wooden stick, just like a master painter is still using a wooden stick. It's not about the machine in the end. So ultimately, both machines have their purpose. Fun, fantasy, concave, competition. Go for it. Commercial, fast recutting, cutting many, many stones per day, needing to keep the prices down. Go for it. They're both easy to learn. They're both easy enough to use once you get the hang of it. And ultimately, it just comes down to your own personal preference. I think if you've started on this machine, you might find this machine refreshing as I did, or you might hate it. If you started on this machine, you might find the precision and the potentially more repeatable angles refreshing. Maybe, maybe not. You might find it cumbersome. You might find it awkward. Who knows? Ultimately, it's a personal choice, and I just wanted to give you a little glimpse into my own personal journey and my own personal aesthetic when it comes to the masked machine versus the handpiece machine. Ultimately, it's about the cutter, not about the machine. So please, please, please don't get obsessed about one, two, three digit angles. It doesn't matter. You're gonna adjust the angles in polish anyway. Don't get upset if your lap has a little gouge in it, just smooth it out and keep on going. If your cutting lap is going up and down by 0.1 or 0.2, it's fine, just cut. It would be better to spend your time opening up that drawer of forgotten mistake stones and learning how to put them back on the machine and finish them than it would be to obsess over the number that you're seeing here because ultimately, your customer or the competition or whoever's gonna see your stones has no idea if all of these angles are exactly the same to the hundredth of a degree. Who knows? It's all about beauty. It's all about art. It's all about creation. It's all about having fun. So have fun, make art, and stop worrying about all this stuff. I hope this is helpful, or at least insightful, or at least entertaining, if nothing else. Have a great holiday season. This is Justin K. Prim in Lyon, France, and I will see you in the new year with lots of good stuff. See you then. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to remind you, in case you didn't already know, we've just launched the pre-order for the brand new book, The Historic Teachings of Gem Cutting. So if you haven't seen this announcement already, there's a link below please check it out. We would really want to sell as many books as possible before the end of the year. We're trying to raise up the funds in order to be able to get this book launched. It's very expensive to print books, and this one's going to be even better than the last one. So if you bought the last one, thank you. But now you got to buy this one too. It's the second in a trilogy. You couldn't watch the first Lord of the Rings without the second one. You need the historic teachings of gem cutting. So please, if you want, get the pre-order, and you're going to get cheaper shipping, a special hand-numbered book plate, and the satisfaction of knowing that you have helped us launch another amazing product for the gem cutting world. Thank you, and see you in the new year.